development and growth. Furthermore, the government has strengthened its national health insurance scheme, National Housing Fund, Pension Reform Act of 2004, National Primary Health Care, and the National Center for Disease Control, all geared towards social protection for its citizens. I appeal to you to continue to have faith in the goodness of governance. The national minimum wage issue. I wish to reassure Nigerian, worker, Nigerian workers that minimum wage is minimum amount of remuneration that an employer is required to pay wage earners for the work performed during a given period, which cannot be reduced by collective agreement or on an individual contract. This is one of the major reasons why national minimum wage is listed as item number 34 in the exclusive list. Second schedule of the, 1999, of the Nigerian Council of 1999 is backed by relevant ILO conventions. There must be parity, equity, and social justice in remunerating workers in Nigeria to ensure that our social protection floor is not skewed to the disadvantage of any worker in Nigeria. Basic or minimum remuneration remains a national affair. Subnationals, states and local governments can pay higher but not lower than the nationally established minimum wage, which was arrived at by all stakeholders representing the three tiers of government plus other interest groups. Consequent, upon the implementation of the National Minimum Wage Amendment Act of 2019, and Mr. President and the Federal Executive Council approved, approved the consequential adjustments in the salaries of employees in the Federal Public Service in 2019. Again, in April 2021, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria approved the consequential adjustment in pensions of retirees under the defined benefit scheme of agencies with appropriate increases that is applicable to public service retirees in their respective and various wage structures. Congratulations, congratulations to pensioners, trade unions, and all pensioners. Tripartism will always form the bedrock of our workplace relationships. The tripod holds the key that unlocks the doorway to social dialogue and, immense, and its immense benefits for cohesion and cooperation to increase our productivity. I hail our stakeholders in this relationship. I look forward to more cooperation and exchange of ideas to continue building our national industrial relations system. As we celebrate this May Day, let us look back and count our blessings and give thanks to Almighty God for this, for his infinite mercy on us and pray for better and fruitful endeavors in the future. I wish you all happy celebrations, keep safe, and God bless. Long live the NLC, long, long live. live the Trade Union Congress, long live, long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Long Great Nigerian workers. Great. Comrades, let's give a round of applause to the Honorable Minister of State for Labor. He has demonstrated that he is indeed a comrade. Once a comrade, always a comrade. I listened to him carefully explain the world of work. A carpenter or a roadside mechanic cannot do that. Comrade Minister, we thank you for coming and we will take very seriously those words of advice. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we have at this juncture, we are going to at this juncture invite for his solidarity message the Honorable Minister of FCT, Malam Mohammed Musa Bello. Honorable Minister FCT, you are welcome, sir. Comrades, let's give a round of applause to Herald, the Honorable Minister of FCT, to the podium. Your Excellency, you're welcome. Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented 
by Senator Dr. Chris Ngige, the Honorable Minister of Labor, the President of the Senate, Senator Ahmed Lawan, every represented today by the Senate Committee Chairman on Labor and Employment, Senator Godia Akweshiki, other members of the distinguished Senate present here, the members of the National Assembly, the Honorable Minister of State for Labor, Comrade Festus Keamo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, ably represented. Your Excellency, the former Governor of Ede State and former Chairman of APC, and also former President of the NLC, Comrade Adams Ali Oshimole, the, president, the chairman, president of the Nigerian Labor Congress, Comrade Ayuba Waba, President of the Trade Union Congress, Comrade Kadiri Olale, the head of civil service of the, uh, of the Federation, as ably represented, the chairman of the FCT NLC, and other officials of the FCT Trade Union Congress, and the chairman as well, the leadership of all the labor unions present here, your excellencies, high commissioners and ambassadors, and members of the diplomatic corps, our great Nigerian workers present here, gentlemen of the press, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the FCT administration, it is my honor and privilege to be here today to address the hardworking and patriotic Nigerian workers on the occasion of the 2021 Workers' Day celebration, taking here today in Abuja, our city of unity. Permit me to begin by congratulating the Nigerian Labor Congress, the Trade Union Congress, and indeed all Nigerian workers for the celebration of the day set aside to recognize and acknowledge their contribution to national development. And it is with gratitude to God Almighty that today we are celebrating this great day. Last year, on a day like this, we all thought the world was going to come to an end, but by the grace of God, we have been able to survive COVID-19, and we are here today. I welcome you to Abuja and to the FCT, especially all of you who have traveled from across the country for this occasion. And I salute the dedication and commitment of all of you to ensuring the upliftment of the Nigerian workers. The last 12 months were indeed quite challenging for countries and governments around the world, and Nigeria was no exception, as COVID-19 pandemic brought along with it unprecedented health, social, economic, and even political challenges. However, as a nation, we were able to a very large extent contain most of the problems orchestrated by the pandemic, thanks to the efforts and deep resolve of Nigerian workers to ensure that we are not overwhelmed. I hereby once more extend the appreciation of a grateful Nigerian public to all the workers across the FCT in both the public and private sector for their support and tiring uh, efforts in our fight against the pandemic. I acknowledge and applaud the efforts of all the frontline health workers comprising the doctors, the nurses, pharmacists, laboratory workers, cleaners, drivers, administrative officers, security officers, and all others who risk it all so that the rest of us are safe. Some sadly paid 
the supreme prize in the course of this fight and we pray today that their souls rest in perfect peace. At this juncture, I want to call on all of us to stand up for a minute's silence to acknowledge all our comrades who fell to COVID-19 in 2020. Let's all be on our feet, comrades. Let's all be on our feet for a minute's silence, please. May their gentle souls rest in perfect peace. Amen. I salute also the other essential workers who function in public utility organizations such as electricity, transportation, water supply, telecommunications, environmental sanitation, security, and all other public sector and private sector endeavors that made us all survive to be here today. I must, however, remind us that the pandemic is not yet over, and we must continue to abide by all non-pharmaceutical interventions as prescribed by the relevant health authorities. We should therefore not be complacent at all. The theme of the 2021 May Day Rally, which is COVID-19, social economic crisis, challenges for decent work, social social welfare, is therefore certainly not out of place and could not have come at a better time. While the socioeconomic effects of COVID-19 will certainly take some time to completely overcome, considering that the pandemic is not yet over, the FCT administration is working very hard to ensure that the effects of the pandemic on the administration's workforce and indeed the entire residents of the FCT is not too hard to bear. For instance, under this provision of the Minister of State last year, we had a very well organized and palliative distribution exercise. We also made sure that all that needed to be done to protect our hardworking frontline staff were done. So at this point, distinguished comrades, ladies and gentlemen, the, F the FCT administration recognizes and applauds the efforts of workers over the years in building the federal capital territory and Abuja, our city of unity, into the capital city that we have today. That is why we are constantly striving to ensure that we have a well-motivated workforce that is willing and able to render good quality service for the people of the FCT. While I once more congratulate you all on the celebration of the 2021 May Day Rally, I also call for a continuous, harmonious working relationship with the workers because it is only when we work together that real, real progress can be made in our dear country. I thank you for your valued attention. Long live the NLC. Long live the 2UC. Long live the Federal Capital Territory. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Aluta Continua Victoria Asata. Thank you very much. You are still on. You are still on to the live transmission of the 2021 May Day celebration here in Abuja's Nigerian capital territory on the network service of Africa's largest television network. The Nigerian Television Authority, already representative of the different workers union that makes up the Nigerian Labour Congress are dressed up in different attires and colors depicting their union and association and are ready for annual ritual. This year's promises to be a colorful parade as I can see from the rehearsal. I am Thomas Obetere once again on behalf of the NTA welcome you to this live transmission. Thank you very much very glad for such commitment and we in the sight of workers will keep our fingers straight will keep our minds strong and will add value to the growth of our nation nigeria let's put our hands together once again for the minister of fct
At this very juncture, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I have the privilege and honor to invite Senator Gordia Akwashiki, the Senate Vice Chairman on Labor and Employment, who is the representative of the Senate President for her solidarity message. The representative of the Senate President. Distinguished, you're welcome to the podium, sir. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we have the representative of the Senate President, distinguished Senator Godia Akwashiki, representing the Senate President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency, sir. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ever represented by Minister for Labor, Employment and Productivity, Senator Dr. Chris Ngege. Other ministers that are here with us, FCT and the Minister for State Labor, President and the number one of all comrades, President NLC and TUC that are here, and other comrades, I salute you all in your special day way. My brother, the representative of the Speaker and the representative of the FGS. Let me stand on other protocols. I am most delighted to be part of this important gathering for the celebration of the 2021 May Day Rally. It is a significant day to appreciate the sacrifices of workers for the progress of our dear country, Nigeria. I salute the Nigerian workers, both past and present, for their resilience, their tenacity of purpose, and their consistency in sustaining not only the machineries of governance, but also in ensuring the well-being of the Nigeria people. The theme for today's celebration is a complete one, and I repeat, it's a complete one, as it is focused on COVID-19, social and economic crisis, challenges for decent work, social production, and people welfare. I say it is complete because it enables us to examine some of the challenges before us as worsened by the COVID-19 and to study how we are navigating our ways away from it. It additionally permits us to look at our creative abilities in the face of challenges, aside helping us to think of ways of improving the nagging questions of social protection and the welfare of the people. We have always made a point that the essence of a good government is the continual ability to improve the lot of the people through appropriate policies, actions, and as envisaged by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Though we have faced challenges of drilling and unpredictable revenue, debt management, and the sudden interruption of the COVID-19 pandemic, as earlier said. Government has also been devising ways of surmounting these challenges. The executive house in Ligu with the National Assembly be working to mitigate these encounters. We have also ensured that our efforts are not just one-off, but long-lasting. We have been steadfast in these regards and we remain committed to improving on them. Though we are unfortunately in a period of insecurity, I can also say they are not insurmountable. Once, once we are conscious of our roles as stakeholders 
in the evaluation of a great country, Nigeria. The criminal elements in our midst have taken the ignorable path to survival. This path is unacceptable, and we shall continue to do all that is possible to make insurgents, kidnapping, and banditry a thing of past in this country. The National Assembly is always ready to partner with the executives and indeed other arms of government to ensure peace for the progress and development of, of our dear country, Nigeria. We will explore all avenues to this within the prince of our constitutional roles of legislating, appropriating, and oversighting. The support of the Nigerian worker is, however, priceless, and we will count on this. Their interest shall also remain our priority. Once more, let me congratulate our Nigeria workers on our May Day. And let me say, the greatest Nigeria movement, the greatest Nigeria worker. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, distinguished Senator. Comrades, let's give a round of applause to distinguished Senator Akwashi, representing the Senate President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellencies, comrades, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I have the singular honor and privilege to invite to the podium the Secretary to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented by Dr. Mary Morris Namdi, FCA JP. Your Excellency, uh, he is the Permanent Secretary General Services at the Office of the Head of uh, Secretary to the Federal Government of Nigeria. Your Excellencies, Dr. Mberi Morris Namdi, FCA JP, representing SGF. You are welcome, sir, to the podium. Please, let's give him a round of applause as he highlights the podium. Your Excellency, you are welcome, sir. President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, ably represented by the Honorable Minister of Labor and Productivity, Your Excellency, Senate President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented the Speaker, House of Representatives, the Honorable Ministers here present, the Minister of FCT, the Minister of State for Labor, the Honorable Minister for Labor and Productivity, President Nigerian Labor Congress, Comrade Ayuba Waba, all distinguished guests here today, gentlemen of the press, the very hardworking workers of Nigerian Labor Congress. And I am here to present a good wee message of my boss, the principal, the secretary to the government of the federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, on this 2021 commemoration of the Nigerian Labor Congress and Workers' Day, holding today at the Eagle Square, Abuja. I am particularly impressed that we have been able to converge here again today after the scare occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic that almost frustrated all the activities 
throughout the year 2020 and up to today. I wish to rejoice with the Nigerian workers, the workers all over the world at the commemoration of the 2021 Workers' Day. This year's event is unique, going by the determination of the Nigerian workers to celebrate it in a glorious way, demonstrated by the glorious turnout that we reckon with here today, despite the COVID-19 pandemic. I am particularly impressed that the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic did not deter Nigerian workers from putting in their best. This is highly commendable and appreciated. I also want to appreciate the role of the Nigerian workers in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. This has been demonstrated by your determination to keep the spirit afloat. The government will always cherish the immense contributions of the Nigerian workers in through your robust policies and programs. We appeal to all Nigerian workers to continue to do all that is necessary to help promote efficiency and productivity in the public service. Government will always partner with labor to address the most critical challenges of the Nigerian workers. I particularly wish to remind our citizens, and in particular, Nigerian workers, that the COVID-19 pandemic is still around with us. Therefore, you are advised to continue to observe all the known pharmaceutical interventions, such as regular hand washing, proper wearing of face masks, avoiding large congregations, and then, of course, avoiding non-essential travels. Remember very well that we are now at the vaccine phase of the national response to COVID-19 pandemic. You are therefore encouraged to take the advantage of the vaccine and get vaccinated. More especially with the ravaging third wave of the virus in some countries of the world. It has also put a very serious caution on non-essential travels. I will commend the leadership of the NLC and indeed all Nigerian workers in your resilience and determination to make this country great. I wish to identify with the challenges of the Nigerian Labor Congress and wish to address all these issues as they come by. On that note, I wish to congratulate all Nigerian workers and the leadership of the Nigerian Labor Congress for the good work they are doing. I wish you well and ask you to enjoy this year's celebration. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Representative of the SGF. Uh, we are not surprised that he's reminding us about the COVID-19 protocols. And we are also happy to note that he has seen that labor are 100% compliant with the COVID-19 protocol. You can also see me wearing my mask firmly to my face. Comrades, your excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. The time has come for the leaders of Nigerian workers to educate us on the way forward. I now have the singular honor and privilege to invite the two presidents, the president with the double P and the president with the single P. 
Comrade Ayuba Waba, MNI, and Comrade Kadir Olale, FCA, to the podium to deliver their address. Comrade President, you are welcome. As they come, we will sing solidarity song to herald them. So, comrades, let's rise. Let the workers rise. Your leaders are coming. Solidarity forever. Solidar NAC members, rally round your leaders. Solidarity forever for the union makes us strong. Sweet story, there is victory. NAC members, please hurry up. You are supposed to be on ground before the principals. Apologies, comrade presidents. There is victory for us in the struggle, in the struggle for our members. There is victory for us. Forward, forward ever, backward never in the struggle for our members. There is victory. Great Nigerian workers. If our vibrant Nigerian workers, hard-working Nigerian workers, great. The President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, heavily represented by the Minister of Labor and Employment, Senator Dr. Chris Ingege, the Senate President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented by the Chairperson, Senate Committee on Labor, Distinguished Senator Godia, the Honorable Minister of the FCT, Malam Mohamed Bello, Honorable Minister of State Labor, Comrade Festus Kiamo, SAN, the Head of Service, the representative of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Permanent Secretary General Services, former President, Nigerian Labor Congress, and the founding president of the NLC, Comrade Hassan Somodu, former president of the NLC, Comrade Adams Aliu Oshumale, former president of the Trade Union Congress, Comrade Bala Boboe Kegama. The Director General NECA, members of the Diplomatic Corps, great Nigerian workers. On behalf of the Trade Union Congress and the Nigerian Labor Congress, we have the singular honor to present the 2021 May Day Address. On behalf of organized labor in Nigeria, we bring to Nigerian workers pensioners, labor veterans, allies in civil society, women, youth, and all people of goodwill, very hearty facilitations on the commemoration of the 2021 Workers' Day. We are here today to celebrate the resilience, the resurgence, and the resourcefulness of Nigerian workers, especially at this moment of great distress and dislocation in the world of work as occasioned by COVID-19. This pandemic has more than anything we have seen in a lifetime, shaking the core progress made by workers for decent wages, for dignified working conditions, sustainable livelihoods, and an increased stake in the spread of the surplus value created by workers. This International Workers' Day provides an ample moment to take into the contribution of frontline workers who keep awake at our public gates and keep at bay the threats of COVID-19. Many of those brave women and men paid the spring price. Some contracted the coronavirus and suffered life-lasting complications. It is to the memory of those heroes and heroines that we dedicate this year's May Day. I also wish our Muslim workers' brothers, Ramadan Karim, the choice of the team of this year, that is COVID-19, social and economic crisis, 
challenges for decent work, social protection, and people's welfare is an inquest into how workers have feared under the heavy cloud of the novel coronavirus. This year's theme resonates with our apprehensions on how the industrial sector, especially employers and governments, recognize and appreciate the contribution of Nigerian workers at this very unusual time. In sync with our convictions, we must say that our country has not made the desired progress in protecting workers and the Nigerians from the impact of COVID-19, which has brought with it the daunting challenges for decent work, social inclusion, com protection, and the distress on people's welfare. Despite the best effort of government, organized labor, and private sector employees, employers, millions of Nigerian workers have lost their jobs, their means of livelihood, and have slipped into destitution, lack, and misery. The weaknesses of our social protection system has aggravated the pain and frustration of our compatriots. Comrades, ladies and gentlemen, the impact of COVID-19 in Nigeria. Information on the official website of the World Health Organization shows that as of 20th of April, 2021, 223 countries and territories of the world have recorded 141 million, 754, 944 million cases of COVID-19 infection with a mortality toll of 3 million and 25, 835. A huge loss of precious life indeed. In Nigeria, the current casualty burden of the new coronavirus disease as of 23rd of April, 2021, stands at 164,633 confirmed cases, 7,000 923 active cases, 154,643 number of patients who had recovered and have been discharged, and we have lost 2,061 very precious lives. The story of the COVID-19 is largely about the workplace. In brief, it could be recalled that an Italian worker came to Nigeria. He was taken to the hostel, hotel, and other places of work by a driver who is a worker. He was attended to by a worker at the hotel where he lodged. At the workplaces where he was installing machines, he interacted with workers. When his infection was detected, workers took him to isolation center. At the isolation center, Nigerian health workers were exposed to the COVID-19 while treating, treating him. And nurses, the index case, came back full with this COVID-19. So given the foregoing work epidemiology of COVID-19 in Nigeria, it is clear that the spread of COVID-19 in Nigeria is also linked with the workplace. And that is why we are demanding that there should be a comprehensive social protection coverage for our frontline health workers. Social economic part of COVID-19 pandemic. According to the ILO, the world of work released in January 2021 the share of workers living in countries with COVID-19 related restriction have remained high with 93% of the world workers residing in countries with some form of workplace closure measures in place early as January 2021. In 2020, more than 8.5% of global working hours were lost relatively to the fourth quarter of 2019. Equally and equivalent to 255 million full-time jobs. Working hour loss in 2020 was about four times greater than that of the global financial crisis in 2009. Comrades, a research research conducted by a cluster of Nigerian scholars estimated that during the COVID-19 inspired lockdown in many states of Nigeria and the federal territory, about 27 million Nigerians fell into headlong into poverty by doing the community of the working poor in Nigeria. This figure translates to a 14-point percent increase in the poverty headcount rate in Nigeria as a result of the COVID-19 challenge. Comrades, Nigeria certainly have suffered and workers have been at the receiving end. The foregoing empirical and independent market research shows that the relevance 
of the June 15, 2020 pact entered between Nigerian Workers' Representative Organization and the Nigerian Employers' Consultative Association, NECA, that the right of workers at work, including the right against unfair and illegal termination, be preserved, is there something that should be emulated in every workplace. Social crisis, the education and health sector. COVID-19 outbreak in Nigeria revealed that and amplified the beliches of hypothetical in the Nigerian social sector, particularly the decadence in the education and health sectors. The two sectors are very critical and need each other to function effectively. Sadly, the sectors are bedeviled with strikes and order, and our leaders are not actually concerned because they and their family members easily get premium health and education services abroad. There have been too many strike actions by our health and education workers due to government's failure to address worker welfare and infrastructure deficits in the health sector. Collective agreements and judgments in favor of workers in those sectors and unions have not been observed. They have been observed in breach by government. Call on to respect all outstanding commitments and collective agreements involving our unions. Government will pay all with health salary of workers in federal health institutions, such as the just University Teaching Hospital, Jute, Federal Medical Center, Uwere, Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Lut. Lagos government should also implement the consolidated health salary structure, COHES, and overhaul the health infrastructures nationwide. We shouldn't deny workers their right under the cloud of no work, no pay. In that same law, there is also a provision that no pay, no work. And therefore, this law must be interpreted in a way and manner that brings about a balance. We implore government to continue to advance issues of social dialogue, but importantly, is to respect social dialogue and tripartism. As we noted earlier, over 13 million out of school children and also an outdated curriculum, the kidnapping of our school children via this current insecurity surge on the sectors, health and education, we cannot deny the fact that we have a major issue therefore at hand. No nation develops better than its education sector. As a matter of fact, it is the OPC and government must implement the UNESCO benchmark of budgeting 26% for our annual budget to cater for education. Social protection in Nigeria. The COVID-19 pandemic has further exposed the inherent deficiencies in Nigerian social protection system. A sound social protection system provides a cushioning mechanism in the midst of life cycle of vulnerability through nationally defined social protection flaws that guarantees citizen access to essential health care, basic income security for vulnerable citizens, such as the unemployed, the aged, the physically challenged, women, and those displaced persons by natural disasters. The pandemic has further exposed the inadequacies of current flown economic model of globalization, marked by wealth accumulation and that of social justice. A recent ILO report posited that 71% of people globally have little or no access to social protection. Before COVID-19 comrades, there was massive inequality income, especially income inequality, racial injustice, and gender discrimination. We were also confronted with tough choices between the best and worst impacts of technology, all of which point to the need for a new social contract. Universal social protection must be the cornerstone of the new social contract. Globally, workers are demanding for universal social protection for workers to address and prevent future shock, especially for workers in the informal sector. As we speak, over 2 billion workers are earning their livelihood in the informal economy globally. This represents over 60% of workers globally and 90% of total employment in low-income countries like Nigeria. Post one to the demand for universal social protection, we insist that the foundation must be universal right to freedom of association and collective bargaining. 
Other enablers include provision for safe workplaces, equality and inclusion, especially through equal economic participation of women, all racial groups, migrant workers, and young workers, and a guarantee that vulnerable segments of the workforce are protected from discrimination, harassment, and violence in the workplace within the context of ILO Convention 190. We demand those as basic minimal fundamental working rights for persons in the formal and informal sector of our economy. In more practical terms, comrades, we also call for conditional wage subsidies. This extension of unemployment benefit is also very important. Universal access to health care, pay sick leaves to all workers, including the self-employed, platform employed workers, migrant workers, informal sector workers. We also call for income security for the aged and the listing of COVID-19 as a notifiable and compensable occupational hazard. We also call for the ratification of ILO Convention 102 on social security and the implementation of Recommendation 202 of the ILO on social protection floor as guiding framework for comprehensive social protection cover for all workers in Nigeria. Furthermore, in order to create the enabling broader environment for sustenance of universal social protection, we call for a rejig of the world economic system. It, there is no doubt that the current economic model is frowned. It, is, it has entrenched inequality and insecurity for the working people and their families, both in Nigeria and other parts of the world. In fact, it's more pronounced in Nigeria because you have a category of less than 10% that are extremely rich and you have the majority of Nigerians, 90%, including workers that are classified as the working poor. We therefore demand that there must be just transition and technology. And we should also centrally in our economy planning and policy formulation to accommodate those concerns. All of this will be critical in our quest to realize the goal of SDG 8 on decent work by 2030, the national minimum wage. Comrades, as all of us could recall, there have been attempts by a section of the ruling class to try to kill the national minimum wage by removing it from the exclusive legislative list to the concurrent list. This is most condemnable. As we have already conversed during our national protest and submission of a petition to the National Assembly and the 36 state houses of assembly on March 10th, 2021, and subsequently in an advocacy visit and ad advertorials in major newspapers in Nigeria, the national minimum wage is a global standard established by the International Labor Organization as a minimum wage fixing convention number 26 of 1928 and reinforced by minimum wage fixing convention of 1931 or convention 313 of 1970. It was also captured in article 3 subsection D of the ILO Philadelphia Declaration which demands that every country pursue policy in regard to wage, earnings, hours and conditions of work calculated to ensure a just share of fruit or progress to all and a minimum living wage to all employed and in need of such protection. And therefore, we are reinforcing our earlier position to state that Nigerian workers will not allow a situation where the progress we have made for the past 40 years to be taken by this cream of politicians. We are going to insist and we are going to resist. And let us also continue to sound a note of warning that any day that this law is considered by any of the chambers and also by any of our political elites, Nigerian workers are going to withdraw their services because we are not slaves in our own country. Comrades, our pensioners are very senior citizens. It is no fact that no sin society will treat the welfare of its pensioners with disdain. It is a global best practice that pensioners should enjoy certain protection, such as free transportation, health care, and income support. Whereas in Nigeria, our pensioners are treated with disrespect 
after meritorious service to their fatherland. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, many states have refused to pay pensioners promptly. In fact, some states pay as low as 5,000 naira as monthly pension. Comrades, this is really not acceptable. And therefore, in line with the provision of Section 173, Section 3 of the Nigerian Constitution, we demand that the pension should be reviewed and that that should be done in line with the minimum wage. Comrades, following the reform of the 2014 Pension Act, which is the current act of the Contributor Pension Scheme, we are aware of the liability, especially of the accrued right of federal workers and many workers in the state that is yet to be funded. As we speak, those liabilities are gravitating through trillions of Naira. We don't want to fall back to the challenges of the past. We are the defined benefit scheme was not working, and therefore the contributor pension scheme was brought as a matter of last resort. We are not going to allow a situation where the contribution of workers will also be charted away by our political elites. The contribution is in workers' retirement service account, and therefore no politician should to think that the contributor pension money is a free money. While we commend the president, Muhammad Bari, for approving two days ago a national minimum pension for Nigerian pensioners, we hope that this will be implemented so that the issue of the minimum pension will thus be addressed. Social dialogue. We also applaud the federal government for recently reconstitution of the National Labor Advisory Council and the current move to institutionalize the National Labor Advisory Council as a statutory framework for social dialogue. Social dialogue is the crown jewel in the progression of labor from the trenches Trenteros trenches of master servant relationship. In line with the provision of ILO Convention 144, we expect the meeting of NLAC to be more periodic and predictable, as it will help address a mirage of socioeconomic issues and boost post COVID 19 recovery and resilience. Challenges for decent work. Decent work, according to ILO, involves opportunities for work that is productive, that delivers a fair income security in the workplace, and social protection for families, better prospects for personal development, social integration, and civil liberties. The four pillars of decent work agenda are employment creation, right at work, social protection, and social dialogue. Those were included in the Millennium Development Goal in 2008, which later formed part of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. We therefore call on government and employers at all levels to give the maximum support for the implementation of the decent work agenda in Nigeria. Casualization is, an, is, is really a cankerworm eating into the deep and fabric of the labor and industrial relation in Nigeria. And therefore, it's an avenue to treat workers as slaves. In Nigeria, casualization has caused through our land to the extent that it has been transformed into a driving sector. The casualties and casualization of workers who are forced to work harder than the regular employees but go home with far little income is something that is unacceptable. Our laws have said casualization is evil and therefore we must continue to insist that no Nigerian worker should work under a, the condition of casualization. We use this occasion to call on government and private sector employers of labor to consolidate the milestone already gained in the current labor law review in order to make casualization of labor a teen of the past in Nigeria. We cannot afford to liberate Nigerians from the stronghold of British colonialists only for Nigerian colonialists to recolonize Nigerian workers. Quality wages have also been an issue in the face of the rising cost of living, but more importantly and especially the payment of the national minimum wage. The 30,000 certainly is not enough because the economic challenges posed by COVID-19 have actually eroded the benefit of the 30,000 minimum wage. A few states are yet to begin the implementation of the new national minimum wage. We have already asked those affected state councils to proceed on a statewide industrial action. Some states are yet to conclude negotiation and we direct through this medium 
and through this May Day to say that those actions must be taken to the latter. Violation of human rights, workers' rights, and trade union rights. In the past one year, there has been countless serious violations of human, workers, workplace, and trade union rights all over the country. Those who marched yesterday for the expansion of democratic rights must accept that expansion of democratic rights is an everyday experience with the right to peaceful protest as the guardian angel. Our national constitution jealously guides those rights. For Nigerian workers, it has been a catalog of workplace and trade union violations. First, the criminal refusal by some state governors to pay the national minimum wage and consequential adjustment in salaries. Those governors are violating workers' rights to decent wages and sane living. Nothing can be mannered. We have already directed all our state, as I said, to declare industrial action. If any governor remains adamant about paying the national minimum wage, some employers of labor still deny workers the fundamental right of freedom of association and collective bargaining. Some state governors still impose trade union or trade union leaders on workers. Some employers even punish and sack workers for belonging to trade unions. This certainly will be resisted as we have done in the past. In some cases, governors procure strange powers to prescribe trade unions, forgetting that labor laws are domiciled in the exclusive list of the constitution of Nigeria as prescribed by many conventions of the ILO. Of concern to us is also poor working environment and poor occupational safety and health practices in our workplace. In the light of the COVID-19 pandemic, we will call for a new policy on occupational health and safety standards in the workplace to protect workers from falling into those avoidable occupational health and health hazards. The mass attack of workers and casualization of workers in Kaduna. We consider the recent sack of workers and casualization of more than 60% of the workforce in Kaduna State as the most brutal attack on workers and trade union rights in our nation's history. Comrades, you will recall that between 2016 and this year, the Kaduna State Governor, Mr. Nasiru E. Rufai, sacked 21,770 primary school teachers under the pretext of competency tests. 7,310 local government employees and 3,000 personnel in the state service and 1,240 workers at the Kaduna State Primary Care Board. Mr. Erufai sacked workers with one hand. He increased school fees in Kaduna State University by almost 500%. This clearly shows a well-planned agenda to make the children of the working class destitute. Is this how Erufai understands development? The serial pattern of anti-workers and trade union war of attrition by Nasru Erufai is not lost on the Nigerian Republic. This is indeed the industrial sadism of Mr. Erufai has become legendary. It is even worse now. The current anti-workers disposition of Kaduna State Governor is at the instance of the Britumud institution as part of the conditionalities we are told for assessing law for neoliberal agencies. The action of... Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the president of the NLC uh, giving us his address. And uh, here we are actually uh, ensuring that uh, we cover the entire process so that um, every, even those of you at home will enjoy everything. Thank you very much. Employment contract of the disengaged workers which provided that a worker should work for 60 years or 35 years, whichever one confects before he is retired. We consider the promise, the redundancy letter issued by the governor to say that their benefit will be paid in this cause as mockery of the entire that all of us have sworn, especially political office holders, to respect. Mr. Erufai has refused to pay workers that earlier sacked through this same process. And therefore, I think Nigerian workers using this May Day 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome again to the live transmission of the 2021 BD celebration. Welcome again to the live transmission of the 2021 May this celebration here in Abuja, the nation's capital city, on the network service of Africa Niger. Uh, May Day celebration is a day to celebrate workers of Nigeria and uh, the workers of uh, the globe generally. And uh, I want to assure you that uh, it is about the welfare of workers. So we are here to celebrate the Nigerian workers. And Nigerian workers so far have done well and uh, they need to be celebrated. Therefore, already representative of different workers' union that make up the Nigerian Labour Congress, addressed in different entires and colors, deputing their unions and association. And we are ready for the annual ritual this year. Uh, it promises to be very colorful. It's going to be a very colorful parade, uh, as, I, as I can see from the rehearsal. I am Thomas Ubetere once again. On behalf of the NTA, welcome you to the live transmission. Thank you very much. Okay, high of 33.3% in the last quarter of 2020, from 27.1 in the second quarter of 2020. Part of the challenge of unemployment and insecurity is the crisis of poor governance, weak budgets that lead to poor appropriation and poorer budgetary oversight is the bane of our development. It is unfortunate and a terrible injustice to the memory of Nigerian founding fathers that virtually every part of Nigeria have been engulfed by one form of security challenge or the other. In the north, we are aware the issue of Boko Haram in the northeast is still very prevalent. In the northwest, there is the challenge of rural banditry and kidnapping for ransom. In the north central, there is the challenge of farmer and pastoralist clashes. In the south-south, armed militia still operate in the mangroves, engaged in all manner of economic sabotage. In the southwest and southeast, Local militia are filling the vacuum created by the absence of states and are heating up the polity with ethno-religious rhetorics. In the midst of this confusion, Nigerians are asking, where is the state? Many Nigerians understand the grave danger of surrendering our sovereignty to a mob of violence and non-descript non-state actors. Already, the numbers are piling up as humanitarian carnage left in the wakes of medium to high Intensive conflict continues to rise. Workers are a major target. So many teachers, health workers, agric and food chain workers have either been kidnapped or killed. So many working families have had their lives of their breadwinners brutally cut off, leaving behind open wounds that could be the saw for another cycle of counter violence. Just as we did at the peace summit, we asked Nigerian security apparatus to continue to do more. Yes, we recognize the sacrifice and commitment of our armed forces in the multifaceted fight against insecurity in Nigeria. But the job of our security operatives is not yet done until we reclaim a country where people can travel from Zamfara to Katina without looking over their shoulders for fear of kidnappers. A country where Nigerians travel by train from Abuja to Kaduna as a matter of choice not as a matter of consequence of the imposition of the will of the kidnappers. We must reclaim a country where pastors and farmers live in peace with one another under the umbrella of justice. We must reclaim a Nigeria where militancy in the southern Nigeria becomes history as a result of overflow of the tributaries of social economic justice. To, re to reclaim our country, we must be serious with security votes. Security votes should be rooted through the normal budgetary process for a proper oversight, accountability. The usual reframe that security is secret business is actually a worn out argument. Security is a collective tax. We reiterate our call for improved social protection and investment in social services to deal with human insecurity, which is the bane of physical insecurity in Nigeria. Let me therefore call on my colleague, the president of TUC, to continue.
Your Excellency, Mr. President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, what is the way forward to all these problems? We need an alternative policy option. In light of COVID-19 pandemic, we have suggested several alternative economic policies to concretely grow the economy, retain existing jobs, and create demand for fresh employment. This embraced the need for expansionist policies to restore the essential role of state in protection of essential public goods, notably at education, and job and sound management of petroleum and uh, power sector. Management of petroleum sector and electricity, electricity tariff. The petroleum downstream sector has continued to feature in our policies of market reforms. The federal government has not seeks to accede to IMF prescription of the total withdrawal of subsidy on petroleum products. However, this IMF inspired policy has been clocked in the understanding of the regulation and on the recovery of costs expended in the importation of refined petroleum products. In the commission research on petroleum pricing, it was revealed that the IMF economic policy preference for the import parity pricing model against the production cost pricing model is fundamentally flawed. This is because the import parity pricing model discourages self-sufficient in refining petroleum product supply to meet domestic demand. The import parity model has bled Nigeria of homogos forex and is a major singular source of Nigeria's economic hemorrhage and instability. The, ad the agenda of import parity pricing model is to service the neoliberal and neocolonial wishes of those who want to keep Nigeria economic subservient. It is truly funny that we are, if we are having this conversation of importing refined products simply because we cannot manage our national refineries. It does not just make sense that we cannot manage our refineries, that we are the only OPEC country that cannot refine our crude oil. Talking about the fear of subsidy burden, the production of production cost pricing model. Assuming that refineries are working, it is crucial to point out that 159 nations are subsidizing energy because of the security implication. In absolute term, the top three subsidizers of petroleum pricing across the world are United States spending about 502 billion US dollars. China spending about $279 billion, and Russia spending about $116 billion. Each country chooses the model that sync with their developmental level, unique resources, developmental strategies, and the nature of domestic energy markets. Nigeria should moderate the production cost pricing model to fit into our developmental and market agglomerate goals. Nigeria has a captive market for refined petroleum products. As any serious refiner has no reason to worry about the market for the realization of the product. What is more, the supply chain could be extended to neighboring countries, which is country co currently serve as illicit destination of smugglers of even the, uh, the imported products. Nigeria workers call on governments in line with the agreement reached with Labour on the 27th, 28th of September 2020, to take very reasonable measures to ensure that all public refineries are rehabilitated and brought back fully on stream in good terms. We demand that such efforts should be on the basis of value for money. Another problem is the electricity sector crisis. We have engaged government on the arbitrary electricity tariff charge to consumers. Our representatives in the Electricity Tariff Committee found that the 40 year tariff order was based on some strange assumptions. These are the Nigeria inflation rate, exchange rate of Naira to United States dollar standing at 383.8, inflation rate in the United States of America of 1.5%, price of gas for generation 
at two naira fifty kobo US dollar. Other items in the MYTO include generation cost of four naira sixty four kobo per megawatt. Average generation price between hydro and thermal station put at twenty five naira six kobo. Payment to transmission company of Nigeria and sundry administrative charges of seven naira eighty kobo per kilowatt. There are the costs associated with megawatt of electricity delivered to this coast and the aggregate technical, commercial, and collection losses. The organized labor cannot accept this strange and fluid critical in the electricity tariff regime. Organized labor in Nigeria call for adjustments to the gas price for the power sector and the gas price increase should be suspended for the next three years to support electricity stability. According to, accordingly, since gas supply for electricity generation accounts for 70% of local gas consumption, there has, there has to be security of supply. We support consumption. We, government have to improve payment discipline, ensuring that gas supply companies are paid on first line charge from the revenue accruing from electricity paid in that sector and in a timely manner. With the savings, the cost of electricity tariff could be reduced by 10 naira 50 kobo across the high price band. Comrades and fellow Nigerians, it is clear that the fact of fueling incessant hike in electricity tariff, such as the dollarization of gas used by Genkos to run our power station, are issues that government can control. Price by government to force discos to mass deployment of meters has been poorly pursued and prepared meters are still ordered by this coast and sold at a very high price to frustrated consumers. It is on this premise that we say total no to further increase in electricity. Industrialization, small scale businesses. The collapse of industry sector is the reason for the plague of mass unemployment, poverty and insecurity in Nigeria. Industrialization is the key to overall growth of national economy. Many companies have closed down in Nigeria between 2009 and 2001. Due to harsh operation environment, the surviving ones are described as ailing. There are over 10 textile mills between Oshodi and Apapa. We used to have Dunlop and Michelin. Where are these companies today? In Nigeria, Business are killed at infancy. Why government make so much noise about job creation, but turn around to stifle the SMEs through multiple taxation? This narrative must change now, as government must, as a matter of urgency, relax its grips on businesses. In the construction sector, we wish to draw the attention of government to the mounting debt owed contractors. We urge government to settle this debt in order to recover and preserve millions of jobs in that sector and safe sector for complete collapse. We also call for diligent oversight and implementation of our law on local content expatriate quota, especially in the light of Executive Order 5, which aim at improving local content in the public procurement. In the midst of ravaging unemployment in Nigeria, we cannot afford to give away jobs that Nigerians can do to less qualified foreigners. We also call on government to give priority to ensuring availability of raw materials, supply of foreign exchange at official rates to manufacturing concerns, and reduction of multiple and high taxations on industry, especially companies that produce non-alcohol beverages, which contribute about 4% to our national GDP. To cushion the effect of ban and restriction to access of many raw materials, government should strengthen backward integration and value adding in agri and raw materials development. Financial sector and services sector. Your excellencies and comrades, the financial sector in every develop, in developing society drive the economy. Nigeria is no exception. Sadly, policies such as casualization of labor Setting of impossible targets for workers in the sector 
and the arbitrary sack of workers in the financial and services sectors has hampered inclusion and sustained growth in the sector. We must remove the pressure in the financial sector that exposes most of our females and even males into unethical behaviors. We also call on government to improve the condition necessary for the improvement and expansion of services sector, including the hospitality industry, which took a huge hit from the COVID-19 crisis. The maritime sector is one sector with huge potential for job creation and inclusive economic growth. In addition to our earlier call for the upgrading of maritime infrastructure, especially access road to our port, we call on government to take steps towards resurrecting the national shipping line as it will help to reduce capital flight and enhance training of our Nigerian cadets. We also call for upgrading of our maritime schools and improve our bilateral and multilateral agreement so that the certificate of competence, COC, given by our maritime institution are recognized all over the world. Finally, on this call, we urge government to address incessant piracy, attack on our territorial water, as this strength spell doom for maritime businesses in Nigeria and safety of our seafaring workers. The debt burden. Nigeria is saddled with a huge debt stock. Close to 80% of our revenue from federation account goes to the servicing of debt accumulated by federal government alone. So this story is the same in many states like Kaduna with very huge debt. Currently, the Central Bank of Nigeria has granted over 10 trillion ways and means advanced to the federal government. The loan portfolio far exceeds what the status of CBN allows her to do. We understand that in this context, the, the Debt Management Office wants to propose a mean of security to cover local debt. This measure will, will only enable the government to borrow more money. Like all external funding, Nigeria is on, Nigeria's unending borrowing comes with stiff conditionalities. Our country has increasingly be, become a high risk borrower. The further devaluation of national currency, a defined implication of the borrowing policy has been inflation pressure on the economy, as every significant rise in domestic debt has led to pressure on the local. Transaction costs of doing business and working of the minimum wage with increase in cost of living. All this hurts most Nigeria, especially workers, as well as our productive private sector. We demand for an upward review of salary of core civil servants to narrow the gap between emolument and those of employees in other sectors of the public sector. We also call for an upward review of retirement age and years of service in the entire public service. Certainly, what is good for the goose is good for the gender. Although, although the 2004 Pension Reform Act highlights on the of payment of gratuity to workers, the federal and some state government are still paying gratuity to public service employees. Yet, it is gratifying that the private sector employers and many governments have continued gratuity to their employees. We demand that payment of gratuity to, to retiring officers should be restored in the public service to compensate for the years of service by workers. Autonomy of the judiciary, state house of assembly, and local government. We call for the full autonomy of judiciary and legislative arm of government, especially at state. We also call for us to move to scrap local governments in Nigeria. Nigerian workers will resist any attempt to derail developmental at the grassroots level. COVID-19 fascination. We use this opportunity to call on Nigerian workers to avail themselves of availability of COVID-19 vaccines and take the jab. Workers should go get the vaccination and continue to keep safe. We also join other progressive forces to call for fascine justice, especially for different countries of global south, where the trap of poverty means many of the countries will not be able to purchase enough fascination for their population 
to achieve the so-called hard immunity. Labour Party, the continued hijack and impersonation of the leadership structure of the Labour Party by strange elements is of great concern to Nigeria Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria. Founders of who, which are founders of the party, our take in the Labour Party is validated by our statutory membership of the National Executive Council of Labour Party and the further certificate of registration of the Labour Party is still with the NLC. We are also empowered by the consent judgment delivered by Honorable Justice G.O. Kolawale, now JCA, on March 20, 2028, 2018, where he stated that the Labour Party, though not a trade union, is an institutional political party of the Nigerian workers, founded and funded and promoted by Nigerian workers through their national centers. There is also a pronouncement of the Supreme Court in INEC versus Musa, in which the Apex calls held that trade union can form or belong to political party in furtherance of their interest. We will not allow travesty of daylight robbery of our Labour Party to continue to stand. We will recover the Labour Party and take over offices currently being occupied by political contractors. International solidarity. Cuba, organized labor in Nigeria, join millions of workers and progressive all over the world to celebrate the Cuban Workers Federation and its trade union branches on the 82nd anniversary of CTZ. We call on the countries of the world to prevail on government of the United States of America to remove all economic, commercial, financial embargoes placed on Cuba, including over 24 unilateral coercive measures imposed in the dying days of Mr. Donald Trump's presidency. These sanctions have greatly undermined the fullest potential of working people of Cuba and their families. Enough is enough. Let us make 2021 the year of ending the wish hunt against the good people and the government of Cuba and countries which are being persecuted because of choice of their political system. Western Sahara, it is saddening that 29 years since the world resolved through a UN resolution to commence the process for the independence of the Sahrawi people from the colonization of the Kingdom of Morocco. The fate of Western Sahara, also known as Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, which is the last colony in Africa, is still a mirage. We use this occasion of May Day to call on the African and the world government to keep up the pressure on Morocco and France until the people of Sahara will get their full political independence. Myanmar, on February 1st, 2021, the democratic government of Myanmar was overthrown in a coup. The junta has resorted to brutal repression of the civil space, beating, arresting, and killing peace protesters in line with our earlier press release in solidarity with global working class movement, we call for the restoration of democratic governance in Myanmar, the prosecution of those found to have invested in brutalization of the citizen and the violation of workers' rights. Celebrating President Luis Inacio Lula da Silva, we celebrate the recent acquittal of President Luis Inacio Lula da Silva this vindication affirms our earlier stance on Lula innocence is unjust subjection to organized political vendetta. We wish him well in his renewed campaign to take the Labour Party back to power. On Venezuela, as we demanded for Cuba, we call for the removal of economic and financial sanctions against, against the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela which has endured Western-inspired embargoes and sovereign for so long. In conclusion, this address cannot complete without once again salute the courage, resilience, and patriotism of Nigerian workers, pensioners, and their families who have continued to solder on, solder on despite the impact of COVID-19. We will continue to make the most of every opportunity 
to ensure that the welfare and interests of Nigerian workers are not subsumed and completely eroded in this pandemic. We especially dedicated this May Day to Nigerian workers who have lost their life, a limb, or their means of livelihood in the past one year. I dedicate this day to our senior citizens who despise humiliation by the country they serve faithfully, still believe in the dream of our great country. We also appreciate the steadfast solidarity and partnership of our allies in the civil society and the international trade union movement. We look forward to strengthen their partnership in the years to come. We commend the unity of trade union movement. This year, we are celebrating this year with our colleagues in the former ULC. The joint celebration of this day by the leadership of NLC and TC made the very clear that the bond that joins us can never be broken. Yes, sir. Finally, we pay tribute to the memory of our past leaders and veterans of our struggle, organizers, and shop floor members of working class family who are their life serving the labor movement and some even pay the supreme price in the struggle. We assure you that by God's grace, your struggle shall never be in vain. Yeah. Long live Nigeria Labor Congress. Long live. Long live Trade Union Congress of Nigeria. Long live, Long live working class solidarity. Long live. Long live international solidarity. Long live. Long live Federal Republic of Nigeria. Long live. Solidarity. Yet the word falls on earth weaker than the feeble strength of one for the union. Solidarity. Solidarity for a victory for all. There is victory for us in the struggle for our members. There is victory for us. In the struggle for our members, there is Comrade and, comrade and friends, comrade and friends, we've heard enough from the fountain knowledge for our great defense of truth and justice. Distinguished guests, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the 2021 edition of May Day has the privilege of the Ambassador of Saharawi Arab Republic, His Excellency Fadli Mari. Your Excellency, you are welcome to 2021 May Day celebration. As in the same vein, the Ambassador to Venezuela, His Excellency David Velasquez, pardon my pronunciation. Your Excellency, you are welcome to the 2021 edition of May Day. Of course, Clara Pulido in the Embassy of Venezuela. Comrade Clara, you are also welcome. 
I have the honor and privilege to introduce to you His Excellency Humphrey Gaysem. He is the High Commissioner of Namibia. He has joined Nigerian workers to celebrate 2021 edition of May Day. Your Excellency, you are welcome to 2021 edition of May Day in Abuja. The antecedents of Nigerian workers, we are homely, friendly, and uh, we are good to go. We also have in our midst the acting president of Association of Senior Civil Servants, Comrade Tommy Etim Okon. Comrade Tommy, you are welcome to 2021 edition of May Day. Comrade. Thank you very much, Comrade Nuhu. Once again, if you are just joining us, this is coming to you live from the studios of NLC and TUC, taking place here in the Eagle Square of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Indeed, industrial relations is designed to bring together workers and their employers in order to harmonize and streamline issues of, of common interest that is capable of an objective, the growth of the nation. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we are very, very glad that we are celebrating the strength of our dignity and labor today. Indeed, we are very, very proud. Comrade Nuhu, are we not proud of being workers? Of course, we are Thank proud you. to announce that we create the world. Exactly. Once again, my name is Comrade Paul Simon. We are here together. At this very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, comrades and friends, members of the praise, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I have the very, very privilege and honor with all zest and dexterity to invite the chief guest of honor, His Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamedou Buhari, and who is ably represented by His Excellency, Senator Chris Ingige, the Honorable Minister of Labor and Employment of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for his remarks. Distinguished guests, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Let's give a round of applause to the Honorable Minister of Labor representing the, minister, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And quickly before he arrives, I have the honor of introducing the President of Construction Workers Union of Nigeria, Comrade Asuguni, is also here with us. Comrade Asuguni, you are welcome to 2021 edition of May Day. Comrade, shall we all rise to welcome the representative of the President? Shall we rise, comrades? Thank you very much. President Muhammad Buhari, President of Federal Republic of Nigeria, here on this occasion, represented by the Minister of uh, Labor and Employment, that's my small self, the Minister of Federal Capital Territory, our landlord, the representative of the Senate President, distinguished Senator Godia Kwashiki, who is also Chairman, Senate Committee on Labor, Employment, and Productivity, the Honorable Minister of State for Labor and Employment, Representative of uh, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. <laughs> Representative of the uh, Head of Service. <laughs> of uh, the Head of Service of the Federation. Our host, our two hosts for today, President of Nigeria Labor Congress, Comrade Ayuba Mwaba, and the President of the Trade Union Congress, Comrade Kadri Olale. 
past presidents of the Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress, starting from the founding president of uh, the NLC, Comrade Hassan Somanu, elder statesman. Comrade Excellency Adams Eric Oshomole, immediate past national chairman of the biggest party in Africa, the All Progressive Congress. We also have the immediate past president of the Trade Union Congress, Comrade Boboy Kaigama, the Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment, Dr. Ira Tafa Yerima, Ambassadors and heads of diplomatic mission in Nigeria who are here especially those of uh, Venezuela, Cuba, and uh, Uganda. Presidents and general secretaries of the various affiliate unions of the Nigeria Labor Congress and the Third Union Congress of Nigeria. The hardworking and great workers Nigeria Labor Force, belonging to all these unions who are here today, ladies and gentlemen, I represent the President Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on this occasion. But before I read the President's speech and give you his message, I want to take just a little one minute of your time to talk to the workers as Minister of uh, Labor and Employment. And in doing so, just to touch one or two areas which uh, have been harped upon by the two presidents of the two labor federations in their speech today. Because as Minister of Labor, if I don't uh, touch on them, it will look like a government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria do not social dialogue with our social partners. Or we are oblivious or insensitive to the plight of the working class and people in the informal economy especially. So on the issue of social protection floor, government of Nigeria is doing everything and as we identify with the workers of Nigeria and their leadership in implementing Convention 102 of the ILO and the recommendation 202. We've done a lot, and all those things are encapsulated in the address presented by the Honorable Minister of State, and some that will also be said today by the President. We also, as a Labor Ministry, propose casualization of workers in all its ramifications. We don't support yellow dog contracts which is the forbearer to casualization. So we identify with you and we continue to work with you to fight the cancerous injuries caused by this particular uh, work, yellow work phenomenon. On the issue of the minimum wage, national minimum wage, we social dialogue with all the social partners 
in what we can call a tripartite plus arrangement, which culminated in government enacting the initial minimum wage on April 18, 2019, and the president, in signing the law, made it clear that that law takes effect from that day. That law is a national law. There is no pick and choose for anybody that, con that falls within the ambit of that law. The governments are subnational in states, and the federal government are bound by that law because we have workers as prescribed in that law. So it's not a question of pick and choose. We move the national minimum wage from 18,000 Naira per month to 30,000 Naira per month. It is an irreducible flaw and is even a social protection mechanism. Therefore, we expect states and people in the private sector to comply. Amendment of trying to expunge that law or trying to bring that law into the concurrent uh, list of legislation will not work because it will go against the principles of the various conventions of that law which Nigeria has adopted and is the international global practice. So as Ministry of Labor, we we'll identify with you and we'll go all the way with you to make sure that the issue of national minimum wage is still retained in the country's uh, uh, legislate, exclusive legislative list of the Federation. <laughs> President, the right to strike. There is right to withdrawal of services. Section 43 of the Nigeria Labor Dispute Act makes for that. It also grants the employers to some protection. That protection is in that law. It also is an extension of the ILO principles on, on right to strike. I will not go into uh, all the gamuts of it, but the labor leaders themselves who go to Geneva with us every year and who belong to the various committees of the ILO on work and employment, they know what the law says, and so at the appropriate time, we will discuss it further again. The pension minimum wage is a constitutional issue, and Mr. President did not want or did not wait to be pushed for him to give approval on the recommendation of the National Salaries, Incomes, and Wages Commission, which forwarded the uh, request to Mr. President as the wage fixing organ of government based on the upfall of uh, the display of uh, the national minimum wage consequential adjustment application. The Nigerian Constitution in Section 173 says that pensions should be readjusted to move on a sliding scale with salary use or every five years, whichever comes first. Luckily, both were coming together and Mr. President have got the need for the Nigerian pensioners and it takes effect from today, May 1, because all pensioners will get their pay from May and get arrears starting from 18th of April 2019. So pensioners, your basket will be very full when you collect all these arrears. So I think I want to make this clarification before I read yeah, the message of Mr. President to the Nigerian workers. Mr. President's message is given by me, and the workers can see that Mr. President has been very mindful 
of the Nigerian mix when we come to represent him here. In 2017, it was me, a small man. 2018, uh, uh, SGF, a tall man. 2019, I think, uh, the vice president, a small man. 2020, virtual. 2021, a small man. So we are alternating well for the Nigerian workers to know that uh, we can always blend, we can always social dialogue and get things right. Mr. President says to you today, distinguished Nigerian workers, this day affords me the opportunity to directly address you as a very important factor of production in this nation. On that premise, I bring you greetings and wish you a happy day celebration. Though there are majorly two federations of trade unions in Nigeria, the Nigerian Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress, I can see you all in your various uniforms, distinct as to your respective trade unions. Today is a day of celebration for you and for all workers all over the globe. It is a celebration that has its origins and roots in historical events that gave birth to a contemporary breed of workers who now have a voice, a voice that can be heard and considered across the polity of nations. It is equally a day for celebration for your social partners, your employers, the government, and employers in the private sector. Because without labor, the other factors of production will be unable to sustain the enterprises. Furthermore, the voice according to labor, is often positively expressed for the progress, development, and growth of socioeconomic institutions to the benefit of employers, as well as government of the day in the world of work. This year's theme for May Day celebration is very relevant and reflects a practical and contemporary issue, the issues of our society, not just in Nigeria, but globally. These issues are an immediate fallout of the global pandemic caused by COVID-19, which has ravaged the world and destabilized labor markets. But I'm glad that even in the midst of the lockdowns in 2020, the Nigerian workers never jettisoned their sense of a need for solidarity. The May Day was still celebrated last year, though on a low key, and this showed the strength and spirit of the labor movement in Nigeria. Though the negative effects of the COVID-19 pandemic are monumental. We would, however, hes hesitate to term it a socioeconomic crisis, as that will connote a state of calamity and maybe a turning point. It is clear that the nation is facing great challenges in terms of our revenue inflow as the source of funding was reliant mainly on the price of crude oil in the international market. We have, however, tried to cushion the effects of the reduced income by investing and applying the diversification of the economy as a legitimate way of keeping the
agroeconomic indices and keeping our country afloat. In the world of work, due to appeals by the government to employers of labor, there had not been as much retrenchment and, or redundancy as it was initially anticipated due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And workers in turn have utilized the key instrument of social dialogue to unlock workplace cohesion and cooperation by reaching social path with their employers on turning issues of concern to the workers. I thank the social partners for the understanding and for lending a listening ear to the government at a most vulnerable time when the government battled with the health system during this pandemic in order to save lives through the containment of the spread of the disease. On the issue of decent jobs, decent jobs in our workplace remain a goal for this government. Irrespective of the hitches caused by the pandemic in our efforts and journey to attend the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, SDG, and the African Union 2063 Agenda, with its embodied seven African aspirations, we Nigerians are committed to inclusive and sustainable development anchored by recent work agenda to initiate and maintain economic growth. In this regard, fair labor practices must be the norm in our world of work. I am told, and after consideration, I tend to agree with the saying in the field of industrial relations that an employer deserves the kind of worker or employee that he gets. A happy workforce makes for higher productivity, oil by esprit de corps amongst workers. A happy workforce can be created by employers incorporating the decent work agenda in job creation and retention in their workplace guiding policies. As we all know, decent work sums up the aspirations of people in their working lives. It involves opportunities for work that is productive and delivers a fair income, security in the workplace, and social protection for families. Better prospects for personal development and social integration, freedom for people to express their concerns, organize and participate in decisions that affect their lives with equal equality of opportunity and treatment for all women and men. Decent job in our workplace, in a nutshell, therefore, reflects all the goodness in labor administration. It covers social protection floor, social protection on the different scales of incomes, social dialogue, gender parity and equality, workplace cooperation and cohesion. Rec recognizing that decent jobs are now universal objective and has greater relevance in any aspiration for the promotion of sustained and inclusive economic growth, full and productive employment, the government had appealed and continues to appeal to all employers of labor to jettison job reduction and is also ensuring poverty alleviation through various safety net programs to cushion the effects of COVID-19 pandemic. 
So, we therefore acknowledge that in securing decent jobs, we are inadvertently promoting social protection and people's welfare. We also know that social protection gives you peace of mind and hope for a better future. We also know that it ensures access to health care and income security for all and provides for you and your family when sick, when unemployed, injured, pregnant, or too old to work. It also provides support for your family if something happens to you in the course of work. In consideration of this fact, we tend to look at the relevant conventions of the ILO, as mentioned before, and also through the newly integrated National Labor Advisory Council and LAC to extract and ratify what we can adapt to our national practice and environment. So that Convention 102 on social security will have been achieved in Nigeria. While we await the formalization of our social protection network and people's welfare, we have not and will not rest on our own in combating the challenges of our time occasioned by this deadly enemy, COVID-19. We have therefore put in place some socio-economic policies to alleviate poverty, and our efforts include, but not limited, to the expansion of the conditional cash transfer for the venerable poor from the original 2.6 million households we had before the pandemic to 7.6 million households, which translates to about 32 million persons, up from 13 million persons before the pandemic. We have also a COVID-19 rapid response registrar for urban poor, which now has 4.8 million households, translating to 20 million persons, which includes the urban poor working and the working class. President of NSC and TUC can attest that this has been done. All these are being done through the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management. Through the Ministry of Investment, there is also a general support program, and this includes even help to the vulnerable workers among the people. We also have the artisan support fund, the payroll support fund for small scale businesses in the private sector, business formalization, private sector, all aimed at encouraging micro, small, and medium enterprises for them to try. There is also the free registration for upcoming businesses by the Corporate Affairs Commission. Guaranteed of tax stimulus scheme for small, medium enterprises, SME, for producers, of hygienic products and packaged food to encourage entrepreneurship and the industries. The, NY, the National Youth Investment Fund, NYIF, for young entrepreneurs is also in the basket with 75 billion naira for three years entrepreneurship fund, all in and support for the labor force. We are also expanding the program to 500,000 persons. And this is the perspective also of the Central Bank of Nigeria support for agriculture and manufacturing. My great Nigerian workers, let's continue to work together for the good of our country, Nigeria. 
we may have our little differences in opinion, but I believe that even irreconcilable differences can eventually be reconciled for redemption of our country. We therefore need to issue hatred, rancor, and move our country forward in truth and honesty. As we build back to ameliorate the injuries and have a caused by COVID-19 pandemic, I pray that the spirit of social dialogue will continue to exist and grow among the tripartite stakeholders in the world of work, and that our gains will consequently be immense. Once more, my Nigerian workers, happy May Day celebration. Long live the Nigerian Labor Congress. Long live the Trade Union Congress. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you very much. the clarity that the government is not oblivious of their responsibilities to the Nigerian worker. Please, let's put our hands together to appreciate this very wonderful remarks and commitment. Your Excellencies, comrades and friends, members of the National Assembly, members of the Federal Executive Council, fellow comrades, we want to once again say thank you very much for being here with us, for staying with us, for believing in us, and thank you for the trust, and thank you for the spirit of solidarity that is capable of propelling the relationship between employers and employees to a greater height toward building a great nation. At this very juncture, we will definitely move straight to the March Pass. And because we definitely need to uh, maintain the protocol, and uh, the March Pass will be very, very... The March Pass will be union after union, not so clustered like it used to be before. But my very good friend, Nuhu, will give us more highlights. Thank you, comrade. Well, comrades, because of the pandemic, and our resolve to ensure that we observe the protocol 100%, we will call union by union. Because of our respect for senior citizens, we will start with NUP. Members of NUP should come out so that we can start the March pass. And I would like at this juncture to invite the dignitaries to inspect the March pass by Nigerian workers. The dignitaries would like to invite the dignitaries to inspect the march passed by Nigerian workers. NUP, are you ready? We also want police band to be on standby. Just remain where you are seated. We will call your union, you file in, so that we will be fast and get out of this place. Of course, we are not so mindful of our brothers that are fasting and uh, the pandemic. We want to ensure that social distancing is adhered to strictly. So we. We would like to invite the, the president of the Nigerian workers to invite His Excellency to inspect the parade of the Nigerian workers. Comrade President, sir. NUP, Nigerian Union of Pensioners, senior citizens, are you ready? Senior citizens, are you ready? Please come forward. Just march forward. Uh, please, while the, while the Nigerian pensioners are getting set, please, other, other unions should... Fo Association of Nigerian Aviation Professionals, ANAP, Asuri, and Asuri should be on standby. 
Association of Nigerian Aviation Professionals, Association of Academic Staff Union of Polytechnic, Academic Staff Union of Research Institute, be on standby. Please proceed and queue behind the Nigerian Union of Pensioners. Band, the dignitaries are already here to review the parade. I can see our comrade president is here already. Police band, are we ready? NUP are here already, Union of Pensioners. So the next union, Amalgamated Union of Foodstuff and Cattle Dealers of Nigeria, please just queue in behind uh, Asuri. Asu. After Nigeria Union of Pensioners, the next is Association of Nigerian Aviation Professionals, followed by Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, followed by ASURI, Academic Staff Union of Research Institutions. Let's go. Nigeria Union of Pensioners, please move forward. Nigerian Union of Pensioners, the senior citizens, ably led by the President and General Secretary, Comrade Atoswal, Comrade President, welcome to 2021 May Day celebration. Your labor shall not be in vain. You shall reap from the fruit of your labor. Senior citizens, our distinguished comrades, sir, you are welcome. Waxing stronger, former General Secretary, NUP. And next to them, Your Excellencies, is the Contributory Pensioners Union of Nigeria. Indeed, pensioners are very, very special. And we thank God that the federal government and the state governments are taking drastic actions toward adding value to the growth and existence of the pensioners. Thank you very much. Next, the As Association of Nigerian Aviation Professionals Fan Naira, Abuja Branch, Association of Nigerian Aviation Professionals, fly us well. Comrades, please come forward. Asuri, Asup, come the forward. The Federal Airport no Authority time. of Nigeria, Fan Chapter come of forward. the Asuri. Airport Transport Service Asuri. Senior Staff Association of Nigeria. The gap is too much. Please, Asuri, cover up the gap. Opta, Amalgamated Union of Public Corporation, Civil Service, Technical and Recreational Services, please be on standby. OSU, Colleges of Education Thank Academic you. Staff Union so, of Nigeria, be on standby. Just follow the queue. ISAN, Iron and Steel Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, follow the queue. ASIBIFI, Association of Senior of Banks, Insurance, Financial Institution Employees, please follow. Just uh, follow the queue. If you want to have gone to my place, you are blocking it. Come to that here. Academic Staff Union of Asuri, you are lacking behind. It's as if you don't have a moral. Please enjoy your moral and move forward quickly like because of the sun. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. The Academic Staff Union of Research Institutions, Asuri, are here in their numbers, led by their national president. If you are just joining us, this is the March Pass to mark the 2021 and 21 edition of the Nigerian Workers Celebration. Association of Senior Staff of Bank Insurance and Financial Institution, Evelyn Omedoyiko Olakwe, President, please move forward. Association of Senior Staff of Banks, 
insurance and financial institutions. It needs their affiliates of Please cover up, cover up. Don't wait there. Just come. Don't wait, the please next keep moving. Please come. As you as keep you. moving. Please come. Unions, please keep moving. Keep moving. As you can amalgamated opta. Opta, please move much. forward. Ably led by their president Comrade Benjamin and the acting general secretary Comrade Sikiru. Comrade Sikiru, please cover up the gap quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly, quickly. The next union should please ensure to cover up. Hurry up. Amalgamated Union of Public Corporations, Civil Service, Technical and Recreational Services Employees, OPTA. Comrade Sikiru and Comrade Benjamin, please march faster. Celebrating the beauty of our dignity in labor toward building a very, very great nation. Nigeria is our home. And Nigeria can never exist without the strength of the Nigerian worker. The Nigerian worker plays a pivotal role or a determinant factor in the growth of the nation. Today we are out in our numbers to celebrate the beauty of solidarity and comradeship. Once again, you are welcome to the 2021 edition of the big celebration holding here live in the beautiful city of Nigeria. Amalgamated Union of Foodstuff and Cattle Dealers of Nigeria, ably led by their president. Comrade Mohammed died, but Comrade Mohammed is in the podium. The National Union of Banks, Insurance, Financial Institutions, Employees. Great Nubife. Great Nubife, ably led by the General Secretary, Comrade Sheikh, and the President. The Senior Staff Association of Statutory Corporations and Government Owned Companies, SASCO, are here in their numbers to celebrate the beauty of the workers' celebration. SASCO is led by Comrade Mohammed Atahiru, the President, and also the Treasurer of the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria. Academic Staff Union of Education, Education and Associated Institution, NASU. Great NASU. Great NASU. NASU is led by their President and General Secretary, Comrade Peters. FCT Transport, of course, uh, an ambit of OPTA. We celebrate 2021 May Day together with you. Let's let's step it up. Let's step it up. I can see the textile workers you know, deeply led by their president, Adaji, and the general secretary. Comrade Adaji is leading the textile workers union. Union, ably led by the President, Comrade Adaji, and the General Secretary. And also we have the Professional e hailing Drivers and Private Owners Association, PEPLA, an affiliate of the Trade Union Congress as well. Great PEPLA. Comrades, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, these are Nigerian workers that toil to create the byproducts of petroleum in Nigeria. Of course, there is no other union than Nigerian Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers Union, NUPEC, led by its president, AIG. Comrade Williams, and the General Secretary. Come here now if you want to take it. Afo Labi Afo, of Pengasin, greatest Pengasin, greatest NUPEC, Isoleto, Isoleto, and also, ladies and gentlemen, 
Nigerian Union of Nigerian Union of Public Service Recreational Secretariat, Gogo and Gogo Incidentally, comrades, in the history of the Nigerian labor movement, this is the first time a woman, a woman is leading the, the union. Oh, the third time a woman is leading the union. As a national president. And it's no other person than comrade Rosalind Anara, the president of the only female president in Nigeria of Nusra. Comrade Anara, congratulations. Greatest Nigerian workers. Of course, Your Excellencies, it is Nigerian workers that are the first line charge in confronting coronavirus pandemic. You are presented with Nigerian midwives, busy sanitizing the place to avoid any infection, to avoid any seal of coronavirus. And it's ably led by their president, even though he's wearing his protective clothing. I can vividly identify him, comrade president. quite an excitement that the National Association of the Nurses and Midwives with a very, very wonderful demonstration. The, the Nurses and Midwives are led by their president, Comrade Nati Michael. Not a target, advanced movement, not a target. Nigerian Union of Allied Step forward, step forward, step forward. The Nigerian Union of Allied Professionals who are ably led by their president, doctor, and his general secretary. Thank you very much. The National Association of Academic Technologists, NAT. NAT. The National Association of Academic the Technologists, NAT, celebrating the 2021 May Day celebration. Indeed, we are very, very grateful for this very solidarity. Next on the queue, this is the National, the National Union of, of Air Transport Employees, Nuate. Is here. They are here with the national president. The president of Nuate, Comrade Ben Nabue, is leading the Nuate workers. Your Excellencies, you agree with us that Nigerian workers toil to create the wealth. Even in air, when you are airborne, you see these workers ensuring that you are safely arrived wherever you are going. Thank you very much, Mr. The Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria. Well, Comrade, when you talk about the bureaucrats, the bureaucrats that trying to create the policy. They are the ones moving now. And the, the bureaucrats are led by their acting president, Comrade Tom, the acting president of Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria, are being led by Comrade Tom. Comrade Tom, thank you very much. And we wish you a happy May Day celebration. Of course, even in the State House, Your Excellencies, we have Association of Senior Civil Staff of Nigeria that deals with your files from table to table and ensure that policies are implemented without fear or favor. Of course, we still have them in the Biosafety Management Agency Unit. This is still an extension of the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria. Your Excellency, in the mining sector, you have the Nigerian Mining Cadastra Office. The, the Association of Senior Civil Servants are also there mining and the zones and cadastral of the FCT and Nigeria at large. We also have them, Your Excellency, at the Code of Conduct Tribunal Unit, so that when politicians air, they will be there to bring them to order. We also have Association of Senior Civil Servants at NICOM. NICOM is the Insurance Regulatory Commission. Of course, it was chaired by Mr. Fola Daniels and their current uh, leadership. NICOM are also an affiliate or as an affiliate of the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria. Still talking about Association of Senior Civil Servants, Your Excellencies, Comrades, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. The Association of Senior Civil Servants 
and are also in the Commission for Mass Literacy, Adult and Non-Formal Education, NIMEC. They are there the senior, to ensure that they eradicate, uh, they eradicate illiteracy. Your Excellencies, Association of Senior Civil Servants seems to be everywhere. Please, can you step up? Step up, NEPC, NEP uh, Nigerian Export Promotion Council. Please, step forward. The gap is too wide. Oh, that commander, move, 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 please. The gap is too wide. Thank you very much. The Nigerian Association of Senior Civil Servants, they are also at the National Institute for Hospitality and Tourism. In the hotel sector, Your Excellency, they are there. Let's hurry up. They are also at the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency. Please, let's hurry up. The Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria are led by their acting president, Comrade Tom. Association of Senior Civil Servants, please step up. Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, the gap is too wide. If you leave this gap, I'm not sure we can take care of humanitarian affairs. Cover up, please. Cover up. They are also in the Public Service Institute, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. Association of Senior Civil Servants are also at the Civil Service, they are also at uh, Nestria. They are also at Nestria. And next to them, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, agriculture and allied employees. The Nigerian and allied employees, we led by their principal officers, Comrade Zuberu, and the president of the union. It's like this yam, and then the pineapple will be dropped, then the match pass will pass. You can also see watermelon in the spirit of Ramadan. And next, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Nigerian Union of Railway Workers. <laughs> Nigerian Union of Railway Workers, close the gap. Comrade Ajiji is leading the Nigerian Union of Railway Workers and the General Secretary Comrade Essa. Nigerian Civil Service Union 1912, Comrade Amechi, Amechi, LA, Lawrence Amechi. Cover up, cover up, Commander FCT, Comrade Amechi. The gap is too wide. Cover up, cover up, cover up, Comrade Amechi Lawrence, a.k.a. Commander FCT. The Nigerian Civil Service Union. You can see them gorgeously dressed, Comrade Amechi. The Commander of the Nigerian Civil Service, Comrade Lawrence Amechi. They are well, well gauged. Those who actually create the strength of the world of this country, the civil service. Order your hands, please. Key in, key in. Let's key in. Yet another wonderful day in the history of the Nigerian worker. The Nigerian worker has no any grievous intention to bring the country or the objective to disrepute. All our steps value to the strength of nation building and ensure to maintain the level of our economic and political strength. The Nigerian Civil Union, thank you very much. And comrades, distinguished guests, your excellencies. Nigerian Union of Civil Service is a uh, 1912 union, one of the oldest, if not the oldest. The Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria, the Federal Inland Revenue Services. We will definitely pay our tax, but at least by saying this. Build our roads, we will pay our tax, we will build our roads, build good schools. We are 
assure you that we are going to pay our tax, but make sure the tax is judiciously being put into use. Do not our, allow our taxes to be siphoned. All of us, we are placed to pay our tax, but you should be very committed to judiciously using the tax. Thank you. Interestingly, Your Excellencies, comrades, ladies and gentlemen, it's only the Nigerian workers that pay correct tax because our taxes are deducted at source. Yeah. I know politicians don't pay tax at source. So you should design a, a, a kind of to make sure that taxes are deducted at source. Did you the judicial you the judicial staff union of Nigeria, Jusun. Jusun is ably led by the general secretary and the active president. Comrade, we are with you in the struggle. We are with you in your struggle. Nigerian workers are with you soon. Congratulations and happy May Day. We have the National Union of Printing and Publishing. That's what, sorry. NUPRO. NUPRO is being led by its president and general secretary. NUPRO is the National Printing, Publishing and Paper Product Workers. Happy May Day. The National Union of National Progress, Chop Alone, Tire Roll, Chop Alone, Go Away. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you have the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers. They are the drivers that toil to ensure that Nigerian people move from one city to the other and even within the city in a very safety and conducive manner. Wish you happy May Day, Nigerian workers. Up national progress, tire roll, chop alone. Your Excellencies, they are saying if you chop alone, you will go away. But if the tire roll, the driver will chop. Congratulations and happy May Day. Up national, up national, everything, chop alone. Now we have the Nigerian Union of Food, Beverages and Tobacco Employees. The National Union of Food, Beverages and Tobacco Employees. They are called Nufti. Nufti is being led by its President and General Secretary. Comrades, we wish you a happy celebration, happy May Day. Greatest Nufti. Greatest Nufti. Thank you very much, Comrade. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen. We are just about to run the program immediately after the mad pass. I will once again say thank you very much for believing in us. Thank you for your solidarity. I will stand firm toward making ourselves very, very close to you. Fucked up, fucked up. Fucked up is an affiliate of the Trade Union Congress. It's been led by their president, who also doubles as the president of TUC, Comrade Kadri Olale. Fucked up, happy May Day celebration. Great, great fucked up. Greatest fucked up. Of the greatest of the greatest fucked up. Thank you very much, Governor. The Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, Sanu. Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities. Sanu is being led by its president. Great Sanu. Great Sanu. Greatest of the greatest Sanu. Thank you very much and happy May Day. Saek, Saek, move forward. Please come forward, Saek. Saek is being led by his president, Comrade Okonko. Comrade Dr. Okonko, please move forward. The gap is too much. If you leave this kind of gap, the discourse will be dancing and the jumpers will not provide meters and electricity 24 hours. So cover the gap so that we don't have friction. We want steady electricity. We want prepared meters. Saek, kindly ensure. Greatest Saek. Greatest Saek. Construction and Civil Engineering Senior Staff Association. Please, let's put our hands together for them, ladies and gentlemen. Construction and Civil Engineering Senior Staff Association. Celebrating the beauty of our dignity. CESA is led by its General Secretary. Great CESA. Great National Union of Mine Workers, new Mine Workers, is being led by Comrade Suleiman and the President. 
Comrade Suleiman, the General Secretary and the President of Loom are leading the Nigerian mine workers. Greatest mine workers. Greatest mine workers. Great. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is interesting to inform you that an African country is being colonized by another country. And you will be interested to note that we have the last colony in Africa. It's no other colony than the Western Arab Democratic Republic, who have been colonized by another, country, another African country, Morocco. And in the spirit of comradeship, Professor Dipa Fashina is leading the Nigerian movement of solidarity with the Saharawi workers who will not relent until the referendum is being carried out to a, for people to decide which country they want to belong. Congratulations, Western Sahara. <laughs> Automobile Design and Development Council, please step up for Happy May Day. Happy May Day. Nolge, Nolge, Comrade Ambali, the newest president of Nolge. Please step forward. Let's see if you can fill in the gap. Let's see if you can fill in the gap, Comrade Ambali. Having worked in the State Council and having gone through the ranks, I have no doubt on my mind that you have all it takes to lead the local government employee. But don't forget, we must ensure the autonomy of local government because that is the, the starting point of development. That is the starting point where Nigerian workers will have value. Comrade Ambali, President, Civil President, Nigeria Union of Local Government Employees, leading Nolgi. Let's step up, let's step up, Nolgi, let's step up. Let's step up. Comrade Ambali, take a bow and proceed. Thank you very much. Comrades, I told you earlier that we have two unions in the oil sector. Comrade Recifo, I know you can do better. He's been led by his president. Please cover up the gap so that there is no oil spillage. This space is sufficient to create oil spillage. Please we don't want oil in. spillage. We want our refineries to work. We want all the byproducts of petroleum products to be found locally in Nigeria. If you leave this gap, anything can happen. So come in Osifo. Osifo is the president of Pengasson. Pengasson is the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria. Of course, he is being ably pretended by some two beautiful women and the General Secretary of the, the Association. Comrade Osifo, happy birthday. I can see the General Secretary waving their flag in style, celebrating the May Day. We wish you happy May Day. Great Pengasson! Great Pengasson! Great Nigeria! Great Nigeria! Thank you very much. The National Association of Chemical. The National Union of Chemical Foodways and non metallic product employees. The flag day, Your Excellency's distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, is led by his president, Comrade Goki, and the General Secretary, Comrade Dada, Comrade Dada, Comrade Goki, who flag day members, happy May Day celebration. Please hurry up, please hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, so that there is no ship capsizing. If you leave the space like this, the ship can capsize. So cover up the space. And we know the water is getting dry. The maritime workers will come and get up. Please go faster and close the gap. Comrade, I know you can fill in the gap of Comrade Rabon and your predecessor. This gap is too wide. The ship can capsize. Construction, furniture, and woodwork. 
the National Union of Civil Engineering, Construction, Furniture and Woodworkers. Thank you very much. Uh, distinguished guests, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Usifewu is the Construction Union of Civil Engineering, National Union of Civil Engineering, I beg your pardon, Construction, Furniture and Woodworkers, Usifewu. Interestingly, Your Excellency, this great union is led by its president, General Amechi Asugudu, and, of course, Comrade Walama, the General Secretary of the Great Union. Great construction. Great construction of the greatest of the greatest of the greatest of the greatest construction. Your Excellencies, these are Nigerian workers. The city, they are still building. They build the Asoro, they build the Federal Secretariat, they build all the bridges, they build all the toilet, they build National Assembly, they build all the judiciary. They are Nigerian workers building Abuja, and they are still building your Excellency. The workers that are toiling through Abuja City. Thank you very much. Great construction. Greatest construction. Greatest of the greatest of the greatest construction. Don't be scared by their number. They are the ones toiling to build Abuja City. They are still building. Very soon we will follow our to build this state. But see Nigerian workers. Greatest construction workers.
Comrade, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to convey our condolences over the demise of your General Secretary. It's indeed a great loss to Nigerian workers. We thank you very much and we pray for the repose of Comrade Silas and his wife and the children. Thank you very much, Medical and Health Workers Union. Let's advance. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Let's move. Thank you very much. Greatest Medical and Health Workers. Greatest Medical and Health Workers. It is being led by its principal officers. I can see the General Secretary, the President, and the General Secretary. Thank you very much and accept our condolences. Your pain is our pain, and our gain, your gain is also our gain. We are with you in mourning. We pray that God will impose the spirit of Comrade Silas, the wife, and the children. Please accept the condolences of the entire Nigerian workers. Thank you very much. Please, let's step it up. Your Excellency, these are head workers, they are already cautious, and that's why you see them with umbrella shielding themselves from the sun.
write your name, write your teacher. Pay the minimum wage to primary school teachers, stock and slave teachers. Education is a right, not a privilege. Pay the minimum wage to all Nigerian workers. Pay the minimum wage to all Nigerian workers. Say no to casualization. Let's go, let's go, let's go, so that we can reduce education. Education, excellency, is a right and not a privilege.
Thank you, and may the Almighty Allah bless you all. National Anthem, Police Band.